Good afternoon, I am Rika Estrada, officer in charge of the CCP Visual Arts and Museum Division. Welcome and thank you for tuning in to History as Material, an online artist talk with Pio Abad and Roberto Roldan. We're very lucky to have two artists today whose practice spans not only generations, but also vast experience, knowledge, interna and international acclaim. Our talk today, History as Material, aims to look into the respective artistic practices and to serve as a productive conversation about what now? If history is your material, what is the best way to move forward 
when history is so malleable and transitional? Where does this leave us? Uh, where do we go from here? What is the role of art in these times? It brings me great pleasure to introduce one of our inaugural 21 AM exhibiting artists, Pio Abad. Pio Abad is an artist based in London, United Kingdom. His work is concerned with the social and political signification of things. Deeply informed by the modern history of the Philippines where the artist was born and raised, his work uses strategies of appropriation to mine alternative or repressed historical events, unravel official accounts, and draw out threads of complicity between incidents and the ideologies and people. He's presented solo exhibitions in Cadiz, San Francisco, and Oakville Galleries, Ontario in 2019, the Center for Contemporary Art Glasgow in 2016, the Center for Contemporary Asian Art uh, Sydney, and in Gasworks London uh, in 2014, among others. He also participated in group exhibitions at the Whitechapel Gallery London, Museum of Contemporary Art Tokyo, Jamil Arts Center Dubai, the second Honolulu Biennale in Hawaii, the, the 12th Kwangju Biennale in Korea, the Moscow Museum of Art, Cadiz Paris, and Parasite in Hong Kong. His works are a part of a number of important collections, including Tate uh, in the UK, Hawaii State Art Museum, Cadiz Paris in San Francisco, and Art Jamil Dubai. So we welcome Pio Abad. Hi, Pio. Hi. Um, good, good morning and good afternoon, I guess. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thanks, Pio. Now, uh, allow me to welcome our guest artist, mm -hmm. Norberto Roldan. Norberto Roldan is a practicing visual artist and is represented in several landmark surveys like New Art from Southeast Asia in the Fukuoka Asian Art Museum, in 1992, No Country, Contemporary Art for South and Southeast Asia in the Solomon, Solomon R. Guggenheim Museum in 2012, Between Declarations and Dreams in National Gallery Singapore in 2015, Sun Shower uh, at the National Art Center Tokyo and Mori Art Museum in 2017, and Passion and Procession, Art of the Philippines at the Art Gallery of New South Wales in 2017. He recently moved his practice to Panay Island, where he manages the projects of Green Papaya, among them the ongoing Sri Vishayas project. He co-founded Green Papaya Art Projects in 2000 and has remained its artistic director until today. Welcome, Piwi. Thank you very much, Rika, and I'm happy to be here. And with that, let's begin. Take it away, Pio and Piwi. Thank you. Um, I guess, you know, I'll, I'll start. Um, Piwi, maraming maraming salamat for agreeing to, you know, to be part of this conversation. I think when, when we were thinking of like a, a public event to accompany um, Francis and my 21 AM presentation, you know, I, I always thought it'd be a productive one to have a conversation with you. Um, and given the events of the past few months, you know, I, I can't think of a better person to answer or not answer the question, what now? <laughs> um, I think the words that Rika started with, you know, the questions posed are, I think a lot of us are contemplating, you know, these, these questions. And while, you know, I don't promise to the viewers that we might come up with anything uh, definite in this conversation, I think it's it's important to start processing, you know, what the role of the artist is in history, particularly artists who are invested in in telling historical narratives and making, you know, the past present, so to speak. Um, but I think before we move forward, it might be a, a little bit useful to look back a little bit um, not too much, <laughs> um, but just to uh, February 25, 2022, actually, uh, which is the day that we launched um, 21 AM, um, when we launched this particular iteration of 
what has been uh, a 10 year project of mine uh, called the collection of Jane Ryan and William Saunders. Um, I think those who've been able to navigate um, the work kind of have an understanding of the histories embedded within um, <clears throat> the project. Um, and I think, you know, that project opening in February to now, I feel like, you know, there's, there's a saying that, you know, there are, there are uh, years when uh, nothing happens and then there are months when like decades happen. <laughs> and, and I feel like, you know, this, this particular moment in, in our shared history has been one of those collection of months. Um, and I think, you know, what, you know, what I thought would be good to start as well, like as, as we opened that project at the CCP, you also opened um, a similar kind of, in some ways revisiting um, kind of previous work, but also in a way it kind of is, uh, it's a continuation of what has been, you know, a long-term project for you, which is, you know, re, I guess, repurposing old images mm -hmm. to, to kind of talk about the urgencies of the present. So maybe, maybe you can start by talking a little bit about that project and that can hopefully open up to, you know, the question, what now? What can artists do moving forward? Right. Uh, una sa lahat piyo, maraming salamat for bringing me in, into this conversation because obviously I also have a lot to say about history and where I want history to proceed from, from here. Uh, you were talking about the social <coughs> volcano diaries, which did not start as a diary actually. Uh, if you will recall, uh, the space of Green Papaya burned down in 2020 in June. At the time, at the height of the pandemic, and at the time when uh, AAA or the Asia Art Archive was helping us put together our archive. And among the materials that were lost in the fire were documentations of my work from way back uh, when I was based in Negros Island. And uh, we happened to find, uh, a, it was already a digital file that was saved from the fire of the works that we sent to Japan for an exhibition, uh, right? When was that? In the year 1980, uh, the incident happened in the year 1985, but we were able to send the works to Japan in 86 and they never mm -hmm. returned. Luckily during the time, uh, we had slides to document all these works, and those slides were digitized before the fire right. happened. Before the fire happened. So when I finally found that uh, I had those digital files, so had, had you considered them. these works lost? Yeah, yeah. Actually, actually, uh, okay. I, I, I forgot all about them. Uh, the last what thirty years? Wow. And so the social volcano diaries. <laughs> is composed of two series from two exhibitions. One was sent to uh, the Netherlands and one was sent to Japan. Both works did not return, but luckily uh, there were slides that we were able to digitize. So the ones that were sent to Japan, uh, reflecting the social conditions in Negros during the time. Actually, these were the same works that were also exhibited in Hiraya Gallery. Um, by the group that I used to be part of, the Familia Pintura, right? And, and so I thought, um, I, it's, it's, it's not actually repurposing the images, but actually uh, reprinting the images in digital form. So these are the actual reproductions of the work that, mm. that I lost. And now they're out there again, 30 years uh, after they, they were launched. Uh, they're out there again, people are looking into them again. And I think this is a way of uh, looking back at history, uh, not in the form of text, but in the form of how artists uh, perceive their surroundings, their environment, the social conditions uh, during the time. So I think there's uh, less to say about uh, how do we proceed with history because both your practice and my practice is already doing that. Um, mm -hmm. 
of course, you're way, way much younger than me. <laughs> uh, I think I'm uh, in the same generation as your dad. So yes. actually, there's one question I, I wanted to ask you, Theo. In your case, you were born in a particular year replete with important historical markers, right? So although it may have taken you, what, 20 years uh, to be able to make sense of that history, I am curious to know, when did you start actually looking at that history and use it as your material for art making? I think in some ways, it, it, I think, you know, it, it's one of those maybe cliches of the beginning of art school where you try and avoid subject matter. I don't know whether that's because I ended up, so I, I had two years in UP at the fine arts department, and then I moved to Glasgow um, to finish my bachelor. Um, and I think at that time, this was 2000. Uh, for I was still avoiding talking about where I was from, um, and I think maybe that that speaks a lot about um, and the very white, the very Eurocentric conditions that I was studying in. Um, that I needed to kind of separate myself from biography, so to speak. But I think as I was studying, so between two thousand four and two thousand seven it became obvious that, you know, history is, is embedded in you. Um, and, and I think it was during that time, maybe. So 2007 was when I started, you know, really looking into my personal history and particularly the kind of, the multiple levels of political trauma that have created me. <laughs> um, <laughs> And like you said, 83 was, you know, a pivotal time in so many ways. Um, first of all, uh, you know, I was born the day that Bruce Lee died, but no, that's not relevant. <laughs> um, um, but obviously I was born July 83 and then August 83 was, was a crucial point when, you know, I was assassinated and, and, um, and obviously, you know, one of my earliest memories was, you know, organizing, uh, 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 joining my parents in a protest. I was one month old um, after, after that event. Um, and so these things really shape you. And, 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 I, and I think, you know, it's interesting that, you know, we, we decided to call this, this conversation history as material. But I think what my, what my experience with history has proven also is you are you are a material of history <laughs> and you are shaped, you are shaped by all of these events. Yeah. And no matter how you try and avoid it, they have a habit of, yeah. um, you know, biting you in the butt. <laughs> yeah. And maybe I, I, that's... <laughs> yes. So I, I actually wanted to ask you that question because I think there's also a similarity in our introduction to history. Mm. Uh, my time of history and your time of history, um, you were obviously politicized uh, by virtue of having parents who were uh, deeply involved in the movement. Yeah. Um, so there was no escape uh, in your case, right? Um, I was but, politicized uh, by, the, by, by the act of being born. <laughs> the act of being born. Uh, but, but I must tell you that before I decided to go to Negros, I never thought that I ever become a cultural worker or an activist. Uh, my life originally was designed uh, to work in the advertising industry, was the kind of glamour that I was aspiring for. But for some reason, I, have, I had to relocate to Negros. And the reality is there was unavoidable. And that turned me into I, what I have become, right? Mm. Um, so I think there, there is some sort of, of similarity there. We were put in situations wherein we cannot, we, can, we cannot turn our backs to yeah. certain realities that uh, we're forced to confront. Um, and then I realized that 
there are a lot of things that you have to consider. Um, mining history, um, not for the sake of just creating a, a visual expression, mm -hmm. but in the process you have to realize that uh, history has form, it has volume, uh, it may be in text, but you know you can imagine a loop of history. History is embedded uh, in a physical environment, uh, not necessarily represented by objects, but for me, history is so present. While it is a creation of the past, uh, it has become so present, mm -hmm. um, especially now that, that history is being, um, how do you call that? Uh, redesigned mm. or, or giving a new face to the history yeah. so that people now are being confused uh, which part of history is true and which part is not. And then mm. here, here comes again the basic question, what can artists do and contribute you know, uh, to maintain the truthful facts about history? So we keep on going back to well, as from my end as an artist, uh, my responsibility is to be truthful to history and to mirror history the best way I can. And I think uh, there's no other way but just I know, think, move forward from here. Yeah, I think there are two things, right? I mean, I think I echo that sentiment that on the one hand, as, as an artist dealing with historical imagery or as, as an artist who really takes pleasure in, <clears throat> you know, immersing um, myself in, in, the, in archives. Um, you know, on the one hand, there is, as you said, there is the ethics of dealing with that material, right? That you need to be as truthful to it as possible. And I think the act of excavation, um, you know, is an act of truth telling. Um, so I think for me, that's also non-negotiable. But there is another aspect to history, and I think what what we've what we've kind of what we're coming to terms with um, recently. Um, I mean, it's been happening <laughs> throughout the history of man. This act of 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 distorting narrative to serve the victor, right? That's that's one of the kind of driving forces of of the narratives that shape us. But I think what I ask myself is, you know. As much as history or deal wielding history is an ethical question, it's also a battle of narratives and images. And as artists, that's what we're meant to be good at, right? We're meant to be good at comp creating compelling images. Um, but I think what sometimes I think at moments of doubt, I, you know, I I, I question like, you know, what? How do you match or even surpass the kind of the skill of the powerful to create compelling imagery because mm. for some reason they, you know, that it's there. Like you cannot deny that the ability to, to compel with images with TikTok or with YouTube is mm. there. And, and as artists, as supposedly, you know, people who are the most adept at creating images, yeah. What can we do? I have no answer. It's questions I ask myself having done, you know, exhibitions recently about the power of images. Oh. I, I think the only way to resolve the issues about dealing with history is always to be conscious that um, history maintains basic empirical facts. That's, I think that's something yeah. that we cannot um, wait, right? <clears throat> Although history uh, may offer some abstract ideas, but we always go back, what are the facts, right? Like, mm -hmm. uh, how did you, for example, uh, create the replicas of the jewelry mm -hmm. and, the and all that, if you didn't have all these original uh, materials that were obtained by the commission, for example? Mm -hmm. you, 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 could, you could never imagine something like that even mentioned in history without encountering the, the real objects either yeah. in photos or in, in museums or in wherever, right? Mm. So I think uh, yun, yun lang naman ang importante doon eh, 
is to get hold of what are the facts. Yeah. Maybe uh, you, you can work around there, but there is so little maneuvering that could be done to distort the facts. Mm. But I think what, what I'm kind of getting to is, yes, we represent the facts, but how do we represent the... F- and maybe this is a question not so much about historical material, but actually looking at how artists, maybe particularly in the Philippines, can h- how do we update... <laughs> Yeah, our yeah. representations of history so we can we can communicate better right so we can expand our audience um it, it, is it a question of maybe certain modes of representation um being so kind of ingrained in in collective imagery that they've been numb you know yeah right yeah um i i, I wanted to uh to say something about the, the current uh, situation, but I don't know how this will be framed within this conversation. How, how will this fit in this conversation yeah. that, uh, making this a little bit um, without bringing controversy into the conversation? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would like to refer to how artists are standing by uh, the peasant movement these days, uh, we cannot uh, turn our back from the recent event of June 9, when mm-hmm. uh, farmers, together with a group of artists, a large group of artists actually, uh, were arrested. And this whole issue goes back to history. Mm-hmm. The peasants were awarded uh, what you call the CLOA, uh, Certificates of Land Ownership, way back in 1995. Uh, which was affirmed in 2018 and 2019 by the Agrarian Agrarian Reform Commission. So I think this is a work of art that don't deal with actual production and object of art. But I wanted to expand the conversation on how artists can contribute in maintaining the truthfulness of history and uh, continuing to be vigilant and protect mm-hmm. the history. I think this is one, for me, this is one of the best examples of how artists can be on guard uh, on the sanctity of history, sanctity of contracts, of, you know, of a promise of a land entitlement to a certain group of farmers, uh, which is now historical. Uh, historical because 1995, I think, were the early years when, when um, uh, agrarian reform was being implemented. And up to now, uh, there's no clear indication that it is being implemented properly. Mm-hmm. So that that's why all this uh, arrests and and uh, cases being brought to the farmers, claimants, and artists are are becoming problematic. Well, I think that's the thing. I think ultimately, right, that the the question of artists as historian <clears throat> also has a lot to do with artists as citizen. Like these two things are indistinguishable. And we can't skirt around the specificities of our current time. Yes. Um, like you said, like not wanting to raise it because of controversies, but it's it's not even controversial. Like you said, it's it's laid out in fact, it's laid out in events. Um, and, you know, we had this discussion yesterday of, of, you know, the very artists who are very much involved in organizing, like yourself, um, you know, we have, I mean, Documenta just opened yesterday and Kiri Delena is the artist they're representing yeah. the Philippines. Um, the Documenta being you know, the, the most important exhibition in our context. And it's something the country should be incredibly proud about. Um, and, you know, her, her work talks about community pantries yes. and how that became, uh, I guess a nucleus for organizing, or for you know, for the role of artists as community member, you know, during you know during this incredibly difficult two years, 
Um, and so as much as artists are organizers, um, they're also like bringing incredible pride to a country um, that is going through difficult times at the moment. Um, and so these two things go hand in hand. Uh, you know, you mentioned, you mentioned about the community pantry. Mm. Now I'm worried about, will it go down in history as really a social action or a response to the pandemic? Uh, mm. in ordinary people were, were bringing uh, aid to ordinary people. But will it really be recorded as, as that? And not as a subversive action mm. for certain people because we, we are being confronted with uh, other forces looking at these realities with a different lens. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now we know what is true. Six years from now, we don't know if this yeah. truth will prevail or will be rewritten into something else. So I think the work of artists, like the, the one being presented by Kiri Delena, uh, currently at uh, Documenta 15, <laughs> will be a long-term uh, testimonial to the efforts of the community pantry. And, mm. and I doubt if there's going to be uh, other moves to diminish the, the strength of that. So yeah. what, what I'm driving at is, hey, you know, <laughs> there, the artists have this power uh, to write history, not in text form, but in the form that uh, more people can understand university. Yeah. Right? So. But I think, you know, that's why, I think going back to practice, I think that's something that I've always, Baron, I've always thought of making work. I think one of my, I think it was Ronnie Horn who said it, like that the artist, the artist's main role is to bear witness. Um, the artwork as testimony and and that you know that that is even stronger now when when the role of testimony is often distorted when it's often under attack um, but I think there's a there's a dignity within a work of art that like you said that will stand the test of time and I think I have to have faith in that. I think we have to have faith in that to be able to keep doing this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I have been worried about uh, the artists or part of Saka, but at the yeah. same time, I'm thankful and grateful for artists like them, like Cian Dairi, for example, mm -hmm. Donna Miranda, Angelo Suarez, uh, artists of Harvested, uh, numerous awards and recognitions for mm. the students, and yet uh, being accused as criminals and as terrorists and being red tagged. So uh, yes, it's the, the work of the artists is difficult, but when has it been easy? Actually, mm. yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. Kahit anong dekada, anong Kailan naging madali maging artist? Diba? Hindi, kaya nga. Kaya nga siguro yung, I guess yung effectivity ng isang work can only be measured over a long period of time. Over multiple acts of erasure, of distortion, of restitution, of excavation. And I think, and, and I guess in both our practices, that's what we... We, we kind of perform those gestures, you know, um, but it's also these waves. Um, um, and, you know, like you said, you're my father's generation and, um, and you've seen history um, repeat, undo and replenish. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah um, absolutely. Um, <laughs> and so yeah. we're, we're, we're having this, some kind of a full circle 
uh, going back to where we started, but we continue to be vigilant and not allow attempts from any quarter to distort historical facts. I think that's our basic responsibility, whether artists or not, right? Mm. As citizens, yeah. um, but as artists, um, <clears throat> I think we can launch the necessary educational platforms. I think this is already the direction that artists should be taking. Something that we failed miserably from doing since the historic uprising in 1986, mm. uh, to assert the truthfulness of this history as we as living witnesses. Uh, so I'm counting on your dad as well. <laughs> <laughs> so in many ways, I believe this is what is common between you and I, uh, PU. Uh, I have so much respect uh, for your practice and you and Francis. Uh, you're contributing a lot to keeping this history intact uh, by way of doing the exhibition in 21 a.m. Uh, but, but also the one in Arete, by the way. So um, there is strength in numbers, and I count you within the small number of people that I can lean on. So uh, part of my secret wish, actually, is for our numbers to grow. <laughs> as we need more people to you know, protect history and move history forward uh, the way it should be written and the way it should be taken and the way it should be perceived. No, I mean, maraming salamat, TV. I mean, I'm, I'm the same. I think I, I really count on you as a, as a crutch during these uh, times. As an as old a, man. As an incredible source of support um, for me and Francis. Um, and I think, you know, obviously there is, for me, there's a kind of distance because I, I for family reasons, I, I, I no longer live in, in Manila. Um, but I hope that what I can offer is also a larger community, not just within the Philippines, but a larger community of artists, of thinkers, um, of supporters who can actually ensure that, you know, we can continue to bear witness yeah. and that we can continue to tell our stories. It's important to maintain uh, a bigger community, a global community yeah. is important uh, in terms of the solidarity that they express. Um, as you may be aware, uh, we, were, we were actively involved in putting together the Transnational Coalition. Yes. And uh, it's a network that helps us maintain, uh, protect the integrity of artists who are deeply involved in political work. So I'm glad that you are in the part of the world where um, you can create your own community there and you know, um, harness this network mm. for future work. Yeah, and I think, you know, I think we just have to carry on, like you said, and keep keeps making the work and keep, uh, you know, what now? Uh, what is the answer to what now? Maybe this is a good time to wrap up. And I think it's just about carrying on, right? Um, and having faith that, yeah, yeah, that the waves of history will somehow, with action mm -hmm. and with organization, will vindicate the truths that we want to tell. Correct. So... But, yeah, thank well, you so much for uh, having you know shared with you my thoughts about you know, my humble practice. <laughs> yeah, no, maraming salamat. Maraming salamat and good luck to you. Uh, and Frances, I hope she's doing well despite the COVID. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're well. both... Uh... Yeah. That's why um, <clears throat> my voice is going like this. But actually, maybe one last thing I wanted to share. I think one of the one of the things that happens when you get COVID is you stay at home <laughs> and you read books. And yeah. it was an opportunity for me to go back to certain books right. that you know I I didn't I kind of tried to avoid um, books that are specific to the trauma that we're still processing, but sometimes it still finds you like i was revisiting i've been revisiting um the english patient the novel um, oh. 
and mm. and I haven't read it in decades, but there's there's some I recommend you know for anyone wanting something else to read, I recommend reading it. But there's a there's some beautiful passages where uh, the writer Michael Ondaatje describes the desert. Yeah. And and there's one passage I just read where he says like the most beautiful um, depictions of boats are underneath the Sahara um, because there was a time when the Sahara was submerged. Mm. And I like that metaphor for the work we do that, you know, the most beautiful depictions of boats, however, submerged by, you know, centuries of yeah. deserts will persist and our work will persist i hope you know and thank you uh, michael <laughs> on that name for that beautiful book uh yes the yeah. english patient yeah beautiful. okay salamat, salamat. Yeah. Okay. and thanks to rika as well for yeah, thank you rika for organizing think- and the whole team and to marianne and ken actually and francis who got us all yeah. Uh, involved in this project. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, our talk today is the first public program of our 21 AM exhibition, the collection of Shane Ryan and William Saunders, Jewelry and Augmented Reality by Pio Abad and Francis Wadsworth Jones. We'd like to invite everyone to visit 21 AM at 21am.culturalcenter.gov.ph to view the exhibition and to check out the other features of 21 AM as well. We also encourage everyone to visit Pio's on-site exhibition, Fear of Freedom Makes Us See Ghosts, currently at the Ateneo Art Gallery until July 20. Uh, For more updates and future announcements of the CCP Visual Arts and Museum Division, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you so much and have a great day. Salamat. Maraming salamat. Salamat.